Welcome to Never Too Late for Fitness Radio, bringing baby boomers proven strategies and innovative products for getting fit, staying fit, so you can live a longer, healthier, and happier life. Here's your host, best-selling author and fitness advocate, Phil Ferris. This is Phil Ferris, and welcome to our show. Never Too Late for Fitness Radio provides answers and straight talk about fitness, nutrition, and healthy lifestyles for people over 50. Our goal is to educate and advocate health and fitness strategies that help you live a longer, healthier, and happier life. On some shows, we feature people like you and me who have acted and reclaimed their health and fitness. We all love success stories, especially if a person is facing the same challenge as we are. Hearing real success stories helps inform, motivate, and inspire us to live a healthier life. On other shows, like today's, we focus on companies or fitness industry professionals who share how they help their clients achieve their fitness and health goals. My guest today is William Hogarty. He is a highly successful entrepreneur, building many successful businesses, including building and selling the second largest mortgage company in the U.S. and founder of a retail bank. William has a degree in nutrition and marketing. As a fitness professional, uh, William practices what he preaches as, as he often is referred to as the fittest man in the U.S. over 50. He has won 10 bodybuilding titles and currently maintains a 5% body fat at 53 years old. William's company, Proof Smart Foods, Inc., is truly his passion. William plans to give his 30 years' experience of nutrition and fitness to every person in the U.S. who is looking for a healthy, easy way to experience energy and fitness never dreamed of before. William has a huge passion for his family, who consists of his wife, Christy, daughters Haley, 16, Rachel, 14, and Brianna, 4. His goal is to help the 20,000 people that will die today and every day due to sugar-related diseases. This includes diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. They plan to do that one person at a time. Thank you, William, for being on the show today. Well, thank you for the introduction, Phil. I really do appreciate it. This is truly a David and Goliath story, and it's an uphill battle. And I really appreciate the fact that you reached out to me and allowed me to platform. And your show is wonderful, and the the... These the, the the topics are wonderful because truly life is not about just getting through and surviving. It's about flourishing and living a great life. And really, 50 is the new 20. And with diet and exercise, we can get there. Just to brief back on my story, um, when I was 17, I went to my first bodybuilding show. Uh, I was a little bit put off because you have to actually shave your body hair and all that. So I didn't really like it. Then 18, I did my first show. I won Teenage San Jose. Um, and I was hooked. I was amazed with diet and nutrition, what you could do with your body. And strangely enough, as I look back at my college years, I had a double major in nutrition, and it was food science. And it was just about a year ago, as I got into this industry, I realized my background way back when was marketing and food science. So I'll fast forward. Um, I had a great run, a mortgage company, um, had let me see, about 83 offices in 43 states. It was a handful. I didn't have a national bank charter, so I had 43 licenses. They all had different rules. Um, and I sold that off, and I thought I was going to retire. And unfortunately, the recession came, and the company that bought me went bankrupt, and, and my, my pina colada on the beach dried up very quickly. And I found myself scrambling to get back into the workforce and figure it out. And long story short, I went through some real challenges. And when I was 50 years old, I decided to get back into bodybuilding because getting in great shape was really good for my self-esteem. It made me feel good. It's one of the, 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 it's one of the unique things where I can walk into a gym and make 20-year-olds have envy of a 50-year-old. It's, it's that much of a blessing. But getting in shape at 50 is different than getting in shape at 20. You know, I, I used to eat Big Macs before contests back in the day. Not a lot, but a little bit. And at 50, it's a whole different ballgame. And so I, I started getting into shape, and I did uh, the Masters California. It was 40 and over, and I was 50 years old, and I came in fourth out of 24. And I got in great shape, and I would notice that I would binge on protein, like literally 1,000 calories a night and lose weight the next day. And I was like, wow, that was really like – it was a paradigm shift for me. And plus – 
that self-esteem I was getting from looking good and feeling good and having energy was applying to my whole life, and it was really helped me through my personal challenges. And I started doing some studying about the effects of sugar. I'd never really paid a lot of attention to it. I um, always had tremendous health, and my health probably weathered my challenges because of that. And long story short, I was, I was horrified what I saw. 76 of the adult population is um, either overweight or obese. Um, children, 40% are now overweight. 50% of the U.S. population has diabetes or onset diabetes. And I just recently joined Facebook diabetes groups. And they show pictures of people, and what it does to their skin before their legs fall off, and they're going blind. It's a miserable, horrible disease, and I started studying it. And today, 20,000 people will die because of sugar-related disease, heart disease, diabetes, and cancer. 20,000 more will die tomorrow. The average consumption of sugar now is 170 pounds per person, and that's up from what? 30 or 40 back 100 years ago. 100 years ago, you don't see people overweight. Now there's so much food and it's so processed and so little fiber. I just had a blood test recently and my blood work is beautiful. My blood glucose is low. My liver enzymes are low. And it's because of the way I eat. My entire family, none of us have diabetes, onset diabetes. We all have very low blood glucose. My dad is 85. He just hit 189. That's his lowest weight in 60 years. He put on his flight suit. When he's 25 years, he used to fly jets. They have to have a G suit. And uh, he put that back on. Can you imagine what he feels like? I asked him the other day. I said, hey, you're going to go to 100? And he goes, well, if I feel like this, I will. See, it's that well-being of life. That's what's important. He's, he goes to the gym four days a week. He's 85 years old. If he's got the time, everybody's got the time. And I've seen what it's done for his life. It's been amazing. And for me, it was always a way of life. But I'm just on a mission to really make a difference. So about two years ago, I located a food scientist, Seth Cox. He's one of the best in the world. He was behind uh, Lean Hot Pockets and Ultra Lean Hot Pockets. And he'd always felt the industry was not ready for healthy alternatives. Uh, they were looking at their P&Ls and balance sheets, and they really didn't care about the impact of the public. And, and that's the truth. And about 20 years ago, sugar got beat up a little bit, and then they distracted it. Uh, the head of the sugar organization became the head of the FDA, believe it or not. And um, they kept distracting the problems with sugar with cardiovascular disease and all that. Well, I've gotten my body fat below 5% 15 times in my life. Okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do all myths aside. I ate bacon up until the week before these shows when that body fat's that low. Fat is not the problem. It's carbohydrates. When I want to lose weight, I cut my carbs. It's that simple. And I eat fat up until a week before my body fat is at 5%, even below that. So whoever says studies this, studies that, I've done it 15 times. I'm a walking testimonial. Carbohydrates are the way to lose weight. The sugar is 170 pounds a day. First time in history... We're going to outlive our kids because we're killing them with sugar, and we're supposed to be a superpower country. Let's do something about it. So I, I met with Seth. It took us a year to develop a cookie. We went to a large retailer. I said, hey, we'll buy, but you've got to get all the sugar out of it. Now, that was really – that was quite an effort. So March, we rolled out our first cookie. Uh, it's no added sugar. You know, you've got sugar naturally occurring in raisins and um, natural products. And they taste amazing, and they're incredible. And we're getting massive momentum. And it's, it's very exciting because my goal is to create a line of foods that are high in protein and lower in carbohydrates but taste amazing. It's got to taste amazing. And so that's what we're doing. I don't believe in high-protein diets, but I believe in let's get that 170 pounds of sugar a year back down to 20 or 30 and provide foods that taste so good people don't know the difference. So that's what I'm doing. Well, that's, that's, that's amazing. Let me backtrack a little bit and just, just take a couple of those segments and dig down a little bit. Um, you, you talked about how, because um, I'm going to focus on our, the, the people over 50, because your product, I mean, sugar affects everybody, teenagers, children, adults. Um, but for baby boomers and people over 50, the, the percentage of people that have diabetes that are overweight 
uh, high blood pressure. It's very, very high. And you, know, you talked about our kids aren't going to be healthy. Uh, we're the first generation that uh, we're going to live longer, baby boom as well. But uh, our health is not as good as our parents were, and that's because of the uh, the diet. How did this? How did we get in this place where um, sugar has replaced um, so much of, of natural foods that, that they actually bring energy as opposed to depleted? Uh, can you clarify the question? You mean how we got here with so much sugar in our foods? Yeah. How, how did how do we as a as a nation? allow ourselves to be in a situation where we're consuming 170 pounds of sugar every day? That, so, that's a great question. So about 13, 14 years ago, the FDA said fat was bad for you, okay? And do you remember the, the, the product Snack Wells? It was a product that was new. It got yeah. distribution, and they were very successful, and that was fat-free. Everything went fat-free. Now, as soon as products went fat-free – you had to do something to them to make them taste good. So sugar tripled. Sugar tripled in the last 14 years when we went on this fat-free craze. And pretty much everything in the store has sugar in it unless you're buying raw materials such as oatmeal or rice. Um, everything has sugar in it, and most of the fiber has been taken out of foods. And that's just the double whammy. To not have fiber and have a high-sugar diet, you pretty much – Foregone conclusion, you're going to get diabetes, heart disease, or cancer. I mean, it's just, it's going to happen. Cancer needs three things to survive. We all have cancer cells dormant in our bodies, okay? It needs sugar. That's the number one thing. In fact, to find cancer, they should sugar in your bloodstream to find it. You need to be anaerobic. That means a lack of oxygen in your bloodstream. Don't exercise. And um, have acidic blood. Stress. Stress causes acidic blood. So if you've got a smoker who eats donuts who's a stress case, he's going to get cancer. And if you can lower those things, lower the sugar, lower the stress, and get oxygen in your blood, your chances of cancer go down exponentially. And it's, it's just been amazing to me that the answer is so simple. Every food you eat either causes an insulin reaction or it doesn't. Let's go to the opposite scale. Chicken, for instance. Glycemic index is almost zero. It has very little impact on your blood sugar. Eat straight sugar, glycemic index is about 100. It's just wham. Your body produces insulin. It lowers the blood sugar um, so much that you actually get the sugar crash and you have these wild cycles. So it's getting foods that have a low glycemic index where your body doesn't have to produce insulin to counteract it. And I have a ton of energy and I'm on a low carbohydrate diet. But that's how I keep my weight in check. I could do 40 minutes of carb cardio, but if I'm eating carbohydrates, I'm going to put on body fat. And the, the, the blood work doesn't lie. I mean, my entire family has low blood glucose, and none of them take insulin. And, you know, I have a large family, and it's working, and we have testimonials. So it's, it's exciting because it's not complicated. Just eat foods that are higher in protein and lower in carbohydrates and try to avoid processed food. The closer you get food that came from the ground, that's the better off. Okay, so let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about how specifically um, Bruce Park Food helps people change the way they eat. So um, now you're, uh, you've been into fitness and uh, so you're a walking testimony of that, but what about for the person that hasn't been into bodybuilding and dieting and nutrition, how are they going to use these your, your products to change their life? Okay, so that's a great question. Food is like politics. It's like religion. You touch a very sensitive spot, um, and people get offended easily. Just like politics, just like religion. We all have these belief systems, and these belief systems are taught to us growing up. Right. And the media, it's 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 really amazing to me how much bad information there is. I recently was invited to go into a national health food box. There was 15 items every month they give to their customers. Health food alternatives, beautiful packaging, organic, vegan, gluten free, all good. 14 out of 15 cause diabetes. 
Now, I'll say it one more time. A health box you subscribe to, you're counting on this stuff as healthy. 14 out of 15 have high glycemic and high added sugar. But it looks pretty. So you've got to know that people want to do something. They're, they want to do something. And they get on these tangents, vegan, gluten-free, organic. It sounds good. It's a belief system. But here's the deal. 20,000 are going to die because of sugar today. They're not dying because it's organic or not organic. They're not dying because it's vegan or not vegan. They're not dying because it's um, gluten-free or not gluten-free. Now, I'm not saying if you have an, you know, um, an ailment to gluten that you should be eating it. No, not at all. But an allergy. But stay focused. High-protein foods. Vegan, to me, it's too extreme. We don't have to be vegan. But to get vegetables into our lives, the way to go. So for the average person, start thinking about looking at food labels. See, our packaging is such where I don't want people to worry about glycemic index. I don't want to worry about net carbs. I, don't, I want them to see our packaging and go, oh, that's the brand that's okay to eat. They're diabetic friendly. So until we get there, just know there's so much bad information. And it's maybe not intentional. But at the Natural Foods Expo West, there's 3,300 exhibitors. I went to 20 booths. I said, explain to me glycemic index. One out of the 20 could. So even in the industry that's supposed to be health foods, there's a lot of bad information. So tr tr move in the direction of, you know, egg whites are wonderful. Chicken breast is wonderful. High protein foods that are lower in fat, red meat maybe once a week little bit of fish, moderation, and start thinking about the other part of your diet. Did it come out of the ground? Broccoli, um, Brussels sprouts, kale, excellent alternatives. Snacks, eat popcorn. Air pop it or get a little microwave popper kind. You know, these are good alternatives. Oatmeal. Oatmeal is one of the best sources of foods because it's high in fiber, and you want to get the kind that's the whole grain, not the one that's the minute oats, okay? Because you want your body to work a little bit to break it down. Um, oatmeal is one of the best ways when it's combined with coffee to make sure your body is ridding toxins because when you drink the coffee, your body produces bile and the oatmeal flushes it out with the fiber. It's a, it's a great way. So chicken, egg whites, a little bit of fish, a little bit of red meat, and then try to get everything else as it came out of the ground. And that's a great, great direction. If you're going to go to fast food, for instance, Carl's Jr., they have a lettuce wrap. You can do a lettuce wrap burger with no mayonnaise and no cheese. That's outstanding nutrition. McDonald's, egg white delight. You've got 20 grams of protein and you've got about 20 grams of carbs. It's one of the best foods. So you can navigate the waters at restaurants. Just be aware. Protein with every meal, and did it come out of the ground this way? I think those are good standards to live by. The organic, gluten-free, vegan, all sounds good. Not going to solve the 20,000 people that are going to die today, though. Okay, can I, let me just uh, ask quick to get, again, some clarification. Like, if you say oatmeal is a great food, and you also say that uh, there's a lot of confusing information, so there are oatmeals out there, instant oatmeals that have a lot of added sugar and don't have much flavor. And so when someone hears this and says, oh, okay, I'm going to go get this instant oatmeal and it's going to give them the exact opposite uh, effect that they're looking for. So what are some key guidelines for reading the label that will say, ah, this is a good choice, this is not? Now, again, you can't give them a guideline for every label, but are there certain things that they can look for that, that will give them a, uh, you know, not use this, use this kind of, a, kind of a guideline that will help them when they pick something out and look at the ingredients? Yes, uh, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, sweeteners. Stevia is an outstanding plant-based sweetener that you want to add to your diet. Do not use Splenda, NutraSweet, uh, uh, saccharin, any of that stuff. Stevia is the only one on the market right now that is actually beneficial to your body because it's a natural plant-based. It's not an artificial sweetener. Let's start there. The second thing, the oatmeal you talked about, 
Those oatmeal bags that get ready in one minute, that's processed foods. You look at the ingredients and there's 19 things on there. I'm talking about old school rolled oats, not the one minute oats, because the one minute oats, they actually process and cut in little pieces. No, I'm talking about the big, original, whole, old, that's unprocessed foods. It has one ingredient, whole oats. Start there. Try to get back to as it came out of the ground because, as you said, those quick money minute deals have huge amount of added sugar. Now, the FDA did something wonderful for us this year. They mandated a new label that's coming out December 2017, so we still got six months, but I'm already using it. It has added sugar broken out. Grams of added sugar broken out. That is what you want to start paying attention to. Try to get added sugar as close to zero. There's no reason to add sugar to foods. There, there is none. Stevia is a sweetener that does not count as sugar. And so start paying attention to labels. Now, one thing you'll notice, the new labels don't have fat calories broken out. Fat is not the issue. Sugar is the issue. And the FDA, I believe, is going to put a ban on sugar in the next six months to 12 months, just like the Surgeon General did. And it'll say, studies show more than 10 grams of added sugar per serving is shown to cause cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. And I think that's going to come out. That's the way the FDA is going to kind of CYA, because in a way, because they came out with this fat-free thing, because the head of the sugar was running the FDA, um, a lot of not nice things happened. So I think that with the new label where it has added sugar broken out, pay attention to the added sugar. Shouldn't be more than five grams a serving. You know, there's a protein competitor uh, cookie out there. It's got 30 grams of added sugar. There's absolutely no compelling reason to have that much sugar in one serving. So that's the part of the label I'd start paying attention to is added sugar. Oh, wait a minute. If someone were to look at a your proof smart, smart food label, what would they see and what would they find there? Uh, we're using a whey protein. Um, and it's, it's, it was a process because my thinking is this. If I had a cookie that made you live to 150 and look 20 and it didn't taste good, you probably wouldn't eat it. People tend to avoid the health food aisle because they're like, oh, those foods taste bad or they're tough or, they, you know, they're fibery or whatever. So my whole goal is to create a product that tastes amazing. So protein, when you cook it, one thing is it burns very quickly and it becomes a little bit unstable in certain things. So our thing was to have a protein that was stable when you cook it and that's still chewy. It doesn't toughen up, if you will. You know, kind of like if you have a piece of meat, you cook it too long, it's very tough. Well, protein, so our number one product is, is protein. In there, we also use a sprouted wheat. It's a proprietary, can't give you the name of it, but it is very sweet naturally, no sugar, very high in protein and high in fiber. It's the magic wheat. And we use that in there. That gives us our sweetness. Um, and the other part of our sweetness is we're using a sugar alcohol. That's a plant-based sweetener called xylitol, and we use it in limited amounts. Um, we don't use a lot of it because we get a lot of our sweetness from the sprouted wheat. All of our products are natural. Um, I don't have preservatives. It's, it's very, very clean label. Although, like we use sugar-free chocolate chips, and you actually, actually you can't put sugar-free chocolate chips. You have to list the ingredients. So it looks like we have a lot of ingredients, but when we break it down, it's pretty basic. We've got the protein, the sprout of wheat, the xylitol, um, and that's the basis to the cookie. Okay. So uh, besides the cookie, is there uh, do you have other products? Yes, I have a sugar-free power truffle. I had one about an hour before the interview, and I feel it, it. it's amazing. Think of two cups of coffee with no crash. They're less than a dollar each. You pop one, you got a nice four-hour run of energy, no crash. Think healthy energy drink. Think a cup of coffee that's a dollar, not three dollars, and you don't spill hot coffee on yourself. So I love them. I love them pre-workout. All the car lots in, the, in my area, they love them because they run a 12-hour shift. A customer comes in. They need four hours more energy. They pop one of these things. The power truffles are amazing, 
And I'm really hoping I can replace energy drinks because they are filled with chemicals and filled with sugar. And the problem with caffeine and sugar is, is you take the caffeine, you feel a boost for about 20, 30 minutes, then the insulin kicks in, and all of a sudden you have the crash. Then you've got to do it again and do it again, do it again. I do one power truffle a day. It's equivalent to two cups of coffee. It's so clean, I get a nice four to five hour rush. Not rush. I don't get jitters, anything like that. It's a nice amount of energy. And my dad loves them. He's 85, and he, he, he eats two a day, and he, you know, he goes to the gym. He has one before the gym, so that's a great product. The other product I'm very excited about is, is we have a protein calzone, and it's uh, three minutes in the microwave, 32 grams of protein, eight carbohydrates, tastes like pizza. It's the ultimate convenience food, and that's going to be really good because the problem with eating – a higher protein diet is either you, you have to eat more often, okay? It's not like you eat one time a day. You've you know, you got to eat more often, and it's hard to get foods that are higher in protein. You know, like I go to Subway. Um, you know, they have a certain menu to do that. This is going to be amazing. Three minutes of microwave. You've got a meal. It's filling. It's three to four hours worth of energy. That's going to be incredible. And it's been a difficult product to, to evolve to because the process of making it is so complex. You have the dough, you have the ingredients. It's got to shoot down a, a, a you know line, assembly line, and we're very close. We're probably within about a month or two of rolling that product out, and I'm very excited about that. And then once I get that to market, I'll be doing frozen meals. I'll have six frozen meals, four minutes of microwave, high protein, non-processed, high fiber, that taste amazing and are simple. See. I believe that 50% of food procurement will be done online within three years. Right now, we're less than 2%. 98% go to grocery stores. But I, leave, I believe with the recent purchase of Amazon to Whole Foods, you're going to see half the people online. And I'm pushing real hard to do that. People, people don't want to go stand in line anymore at the, the, the shopping store. They want to order online. So I, I'm, I'm moving in both directions. I'm getting a retail footprint on the West Coast. I'm starting there but I'm also putting a tremendous amount of effort on my online presence. Okay. Now, I read one of the, one of the things I read was you talked about kind of a formula people could use to, to try and start replacing protein, uh, replacing sugar with protein as a, as a natural way of eating as opposed to do, going on a diet. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yes. I, I, I'm adamantly against diets. Okay. Um, the problem is, is 90% of the people that go on a diet, they do it for a certain period of time, and then they spring back and they gain more weight when they started. And it's demoralizing and discouraging. So a diet by nature is just a reduction of calories below what you expend. Okay? So if you do cardio, you're burning more calories, and so you can get the benefits of it without necessarily reducing your intake. I'll give you a perfect example. My brother used to drink a large coffee creamer once a week. He would drink multiple cups of coffee during the day and put the creamer in his, his coffee. Okay, It was about 4,000 calories a week. He eliminated that one thing from his, his intake, that one thing, and started using protein powder, chocolate protein powder in his coffee in the morning. He lost 20 pounds. He didn't go to the gym. He didn't change anything else in his eating. But within three months, 4,000 calories is equivalent to a pound of fat a week. And just that one thing. See, I'm not into extremes. Do something. Do one thing you can live with. See, the reason I started with cookies is everybody likes cookies. Comfort food without guilt. You eat one cookie, you, you have a meal replacement that's better than a turkey sandwich on, on wheat. And you don't have guilt, and you're full for the rest of the night. I eat the cookies. I use the truffles. And so think of a lifestyle more than a diet. Your mind on diet goes into sacrifice, and your body does strange things, the body fat, when it feels like it's starving and sacrificing. Think of a lifestyle. A lot of people go to the gym, and then they fizzle out. Well, if that's not in your life, maybe walk once or twice a week. Eliminate the creamer from the coffee. I mean, I hate to say it, some of these coffee sales at large retail firms are eight, nine hundred calories each. Caramel macchiato. <laughs> you, you, you eliminate one of those a day, you're talking two to three pounds of fat a week. Just that one thing. 
And you'd be surprised. You get a little protein powder. You put it in your coffee. It tastes amazing. It's sweet. It's high protein. And you've just got a meal in your coffee. So what I suggest is change certain things. And I'm, I, want, I, I am committed to making a difference. This, this company has taken a tremendous amount of effort to get here. It's David and Goliath. Anybody can email me. My information is all over the Internet, my website, and ask me questions. And I would love to kind of point them in the right direction. They could easily send me, hey, this is what I ate this week. And I would suggest a few little tweaks. And you'd be surprised what you get. It doesn't have to be a diet. It doesn't have to be something going from 3,000 calories down to 800. That is not sustainable. And that is full of misery and full of sacrifice. And a human being can't do that. I, my brother does not miss his creamer. He loves the one thing he changed. And he's healthier than he's looked in 10 years. He's got more energy. He's got more energy. You, you walk around more, right? And so now you've got a double good happening. When people gain weight and they hold up and down with insulin, when insulin is up to your bloodstream, your body's storing fat. You cannot stop it. And you get this sluggish um, feeling. And the problem with the sluggish feeling is who wants to get up and walk around? You know? Um, so it's about tweaking one or two things, not a drastic diet. And you're going to plateau after a certain time, you know? So maybe if my brother wanted to get in better shape now at 60 than he was at 20, maybe he would go to the gym a couple times a week, or maybe he would change one other thing in his diet. But it doesn't take a lot, and the results are massive, you know? Just going from a caramel macchiato to a, uh, you know, a fat-free, sugar-free vanilla latte, you're talking a pound or two of fat a week just in that one thing, you know? Um, and then always have one day a week. Go ahead. I just say so. So it's little things that you can do that make a difference. Yes, little and, things that are livable in your lifestyle. And what you're doing is putting your product, Food Smart Foods, as one of those little things that you can add that can make a big difference. Yes, my daughter is four years old. She loves the protein cookies. Sometimes I I crumple them all up in the morning and put a little milk on it. That is the best nutrition she can get. And she loves it. My father loves it. You know, I eat one about 7 o'clock at night. I've got that sweet tooth. I need that. I need that something. I eat it. I'm done. I'm done for the night. I'm not snacking. I'm not done. See, what protein does, it makes you feel full. So if you have foods with protein, you don't have this ongoing um, desire to eat. Like potato chips. God, God help me. I open the bag. The whole thing's done. Because the more you eat, the more you, like, you want to eat. It just kicks in. Well, sugar is like that too. You eat sugar, your body creates insulin, you have more desire. You go on all night long. Eat a protein cookie, you will not have the desire. You're like done for the night. And it's, it's, I started there because everybody likes cookies. And it's, it's a quick, easy way to, to do a meal replacement and feel very satisfied. And it's comfort food without guilt. And I'm really looking to expand into an entire line where people can eat from our food selections with confidence and they don't have to worry about glycemic index. They don't have to worry about these labels. They don't have to worry about all that stuff because it's overwhelming. Well, well, William, you've covered a lot of ground and you give us a lot of great information. Uh, If people want to contact you or get more information about Food Smart Food, where should they go? Uh, Best way is email. And it's uh, my first initial W, last name Hogarty. So W H O G A-R-T-Y at proofsmartfood.com. And I'm running a special. Um, Anybody from this show that would like to try my products, all you have to do is put in over 50 as the discount code. I'll give you off 25%. And I'm I'm really – I'm interested in people's opinion, and I will offer a money-back guarantee. If you don't love my product – just say you want a refund. You don't have to send it back to me. You don't have to do anything. It didn't work for me, and I'll gladly give your money back. That's and I'm crazy. more than willing, if anybody wants to email me and, and just share a, a challenge or, hey, do you got some points on my thing that I could you know, eliminate the cream or whatever, I'm more than happy, and I love to help. And I'm, I'm here to do it one person at a time. Please do not hesitate to contact me. 
all questions are good questions. And then I do a blog every two weeks about the industry, about you know, a, a recent article on sugar. If anybody would like to sign up for that blog, just shoot me an email and say, I'd like to be on your blog list. And you'll get one about every two weeks. Well, that's, that, that's great. I, I want to thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, not only the knowledge that you share, but your passion and your commitment to helping people improve their lives one person at a time. So, again, I want to thank you for, for spending your time and, and sharing your, your uh, vision as well as your information. Phil, the pleasure was all mine, actually. Great. Well, you have a wonderful day. You too, sir. Thank you. You've been listening to Never Too Late for Fitness Radio, hosted by Phil Ferris. To learn more about the guests or resources on our show today, or to listen to past episodes, go to nevertoolateforfitness.com.